okay i will just quickly go straight to the point and please if you are new here do not forget to like the video because if you like it um youtube is going to recommend to many people all right please like and share this video there is a lot of information in here that i want to share with you today and i will be talking about some courses that you shouldn't study them in canada all right now let's take a look at the programs we are looking at remember i said i'm going to be talking about some programs that you shouldn't study in canada and the very first one i want to talk about are esl programs all right els programs do not study them in canada because if you study these programs in canada you would not be eligible for a postgraduate work permit and of course you will never be eligible for a permanent residency all right now i want to draw your attention to something this is not all about the video i'm producing today or oh, i am filming right now for you to watch please like the video like i said and thank you so much for understanding now remember your goal is to move into canada and of course get a work uh, contract and of course get pr and why not citizenship right but i want to draw your attention that though i am talking about programs that you shouldn't apply to them because they might not be able to lead you to a postgraduate work permit but the goal your goal should be to enter into canada right yes that should be your goal your goal should be to convince the visa official that you are highly qualified for him or how to give you the visa to migrate to canada right when you are in there you are going to sort out all the other details but however i want to draw your attention to some things that you need to know today remember most of you you always ask me milton is that it do i need it no there are some programs in canada that when you want to apply to them you do not need ielts score which is the english uh, exam all right or the TOEFL score however some when you are applying to them you will always find it they will tell you that without the it you can still get admissions they are going to give you an english course to study for maybe two months three months four months before you resume your program but remember you are still going to pay for the english exam right it is usually for like around four three to four months now before you resume your program now in the case they give you this then your visa may be if your program is one year your visa may be given for at least around maybe one and a half years depending on the officials that work on your paper but the most important thing is you have to convince them that you need the program you want to move into canada but if you are not able to get a program that can lead you to a postgraduate work permit all right because most of the times to apply for these universities they may be difficult or getting the admissions may be difficult so this is what i suggest it's either you take another program if you find your way into canada you would always sort it out if you are smart secondly if you can do the ielts and apply to diploma programs or bachelor's programs or degree programs then that should be the best option but again avoid programs that are esl all right because most of them would not offer you a p postgraduate work permit that is what i want to talk about now I have already talked about the first part and i want to draw your attention to the fact that some programs i equally explain this in one of my videos that some programs when you are about to apply to them you will always see they will write on their website or on the program website that the program is running for maybe 38 weeks 40 weeks 42 50 weeks i would always say that programs that are running in terms of weeks if you are to select a program that is indicated on the school website that it is in weeks make sure you go for a program that is at least 38 or 40 weeks and above the reason is because for you to get a postgraduate work permit in canada you need a program that is able to be taught or that you can do for at least eight months eight months one year before you can get a postgraduate work permit in case you are applying to community colleges which to me i think is the easiest way for those of you who are talking about age limit there is no age limit if you are applying to canadian colleges all right some universities will say there is an age limit but you are looking for possible ways to go in there and figure a way out so try and convince the immigration expert okay so now i was talking about weeks remember there are two types of programs i will talk about yeah, i will talk about training programs or apprenticeships programs and i will talk about certificate programs and diploma programs as well and of course non-essential essential courses now for non-essential courses let me start with the non-essential courses non-essential courses are in such a way that let's say you are already an engineer right 
you are working maybe for a construction company like someone who called me a few days back on an appointment one-on-one -on -one. she actually paid and we were talking and the husband told me that she is uh, uh, a number of ages i don't want to mention it here and she is an engineer now if you watch this video i know and it fits you make sure you do exactly what i'm going to tell you now non-essential courses in case you are an engineer and you you have been working for maybe six seven or eight years and you now decide that you want to go back to school or probably you want to move to canada to study a diploma program and maybe out of a sudden you are choosing nursing now nursing does not really align to what you have been doing before it doesn't matter what you studied in university but what really matters is what you have been doing for this particular length of time that you were not in school right now let's assume you have been doing engineering and you decide to apply for nursing you can see it's not really correlating right yeah it doesn't really correlate so now for you to get the visa at the level of the embassy you need to convince the visa official so well all right or they know this remember they are psychologists so they know we are struggling to run away all right so you need to convince them beyond reasonable doubts for them to give you the study permit but i will not advise you to like maybe if you are doing something engineering you should be going for something nursing if you are done something engineering then you should be leaning to something that is closer to engineering maybe uh maybe you find something like uh uh programs in fact programs that are almost leaning all right maybe e-business uh things related to computer things related to engineering things related to sciences at least they have a particular fit to engineering which is what you have been doing before before you are applying now because you are not in school all right so that is what you need to know about non-essential courses for example if you are doing business uh maybe you are an engineer and you want to apply for nursing it doesn't really make sense but if you can convince them to give you the visa then you would be able to move in but again try to look at the correlations and see which one actually suits in let's say another example is you are maybe looking for a program that is going to last three months maybe you want to take a cooking course that is going to last just three months three months is just how many weeks 12 weeks 12 weeks will not give you a uh, or let me say a program for 12 weeks will not give you a postgraduate work permit i'm just explaining this to you so that you understand the little critics that you need to know all right because they are very very important if you don't have the postgraduate work permit at the end of the day you are going to or maybe you will not be equally uh you will not be qualified for the permanent residency and it is very important for you to know all right another scenario may come in where lock plays another very great rule and your proof of funds remember when you are applying for these visas your proof of funds has to play a very important role in your documentation i know someone who is now in canada studying a one-year diploma program she has her, 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 sorry his uh, bsc his bsc was in education and i think special education all right english and special education something related to that but now he is studying business administration do you know why because during the visa application he actually explained on his statement of purpose that he is going to be sponsoring himself because he has a business and this is his business registration documents he actually scanned them and because of that his business though he didn't do something at bachelor's related to this business but he has been into business for at least two years he's actually said said that he has been into business for more than two years therefore take Taking business administration, business and project management is going to help him. That was the program he applied for. All right. I'm just trying to explain this to you so that you see the correlations. If you did a program, let's say maybe you studied something like nursing in the past and now you are not into business, but you want to go back to school and you think that time is not really on your side. Now, who is going to sponsor you? Maybe you are not the one sponsoring. You have people who want to sponsor you, but you are looking for means to convince the official that you are actually doing doing this course you want to do this course because of this 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 now it is time for you to reconsider if you can produce documents to show that you have a business so that you can actually link your business ideas and tell them that you want to do this business and project management because you have actually been in business and this is what you have been doing since your bachelor's and 
when they read this they will see some similarities i hope you understand so it is very important to know about these non-essential courses now another example of courses you shouldn't study in canada are training programs or apprenticeship programs most of these programs all right most of these programs will not give you a postgraduate work permit and of course uh, your pr will not be granted as well do you know why because uh, most of this apprenticeship program may be like carpentry, maybe tailoring, maybe uh, cooking. Most of them don't last for at least eight months. For you to get a postgraduate work permit in Canada, you need programs that you will study them for at least eight months to get the necessary English skills. Because why they are insisting that your English should be great is because they want to know the level in which you actually study and stop. So if you study any program that is not up to eight months to one year that is to say eight months if you calculate very well i hope eight months is around 34 weeks and some more right 30, 34 weeks and plus so it's not up to even 38 weeks or 40 weeks right and if you calculate 40 weeks i think it should be more than uh they require the duration you need so i will always say that go in for programs that are at least 38 weeks and above and not less than 34 months all right or not less than eight months because I think uh, eight months is around 34 weeks so you should put this into consideration it is very very important that you know all of these things like i said most colleges will not all right some colleges um um some colleges may be difficult to go in of course yes especially those that will offer you a postgraduate work permit after maybe like one year but even if you don't find a college that can give you the postgraduate work permit and you think that the most essential part why not you are targeting the visa the visa is what you need go in there then you study the program and you think that if you still need more knowledge because you are going to study maybe for one year one and a half year then if your school doesn't offer that enroll in another school all right that can take you for at least eight weeks uh sorry eight months to give you the postgraduate work permit as simple as abc it's not like uh, you are looking if you can find the easiest road and you don't get them look for means to get just the visa because you are not going face to face to begin to explain all this to the visa official all you need is documentation you need to document everything that you are doing i already talked about uh, the programs that will not give you postgraduate work permit and therefore no pr for you uh, other programs that i want to tell you that if you study these programs they are going to give you a postgraduate work permit programs that will last for at least eight months and schools that are in the designated all right there are some schools that are only uh, available in dli some will give you the postgraduate work permit but if you find yourself in such school why not you do the program you finish you look for other means by then you must have been raising a lot of money all right you do the other program then you finish before you know six eight months six eight months eight months you finish the other program and you are not good to go you already have more than one year experience in canada and as a student in canada you are going to be working 20 hours a week all right i know some people will run here and be, they will be like milton you cannot i know there are colleges of course there are a lot of colleges in canada some will give you postgraduate work permit after one year but some will not give you but again put your your, your, your feet in a situation where getting the visa even for the program that is not going to offer you the postgraduate work permit your target should be the visa if you go in there you can sort yourself in there all right that is why i look at it so you should fight getting the visa fight convincing the visa official to give you the visa your problem now the main problem now should be that you go in there study the program even if you are not able to get a postgraduate work permit by then you've generated money you now enroll in maybe an eight months program in another college that can give you that by then you would be easy to go i equally talk about those provinces in canada new brunswick saskatchewan that would be easy for them to give you work permit and i explain in all my other videos there are three videos i explain why you should finish and go to these areas to look for a job or why you should target colleges in these areas all right because this area most citizens don't want to reside here and these people in these provinces all right will always want to give you the opportunity since others are not willing to take they will want to give you and therefore it is easy to get your pr in saskatchewan and other places i hope you got uh, the information i'm trying to pass here so please make sure the program is at least eight months which is more than 35 weeks all right then remember that if the program is more than eight months you are already going towards your pr journey all right 
most of the people i have worked with i always tell them that i have programs but these programs are 40 weeks what i usually tell them is there is an english exam for cameroonians but not for nigerians because nigeria is considered as an english-speaking country and Ghanaians. all right so applicants from ghana and nigeria will not be given this english exam but those from cameroon will have to take four months to study the english of course it is good because that is increasing your stay in canada and of course you study the other program for maybe 40 weeks 50 weeks 48 weeks 46 weeks all right that is already above eight months and now before you know if you find yourself in saskatchewan you are good to go all right you apply for your postgraduate work permit you apply for your your, your pr after that and that is how the process is simple do not think that this thing is very difficult i equally said someone called me this afternoon and was like Milton I don't know, know what to do please are you going to help me I have issues with visa application I have said if you want to do visa application go to the portal it is called IRCC all right go there click on the portal type it on google go there create an account and keep your password and user's name very well they are going to be asking you a lot of questions fill those questions when you reach the visa categories you are going to find study visas visitors visas family reunion business visas and all other types of visas choose student visa and you read the requirements that they need okay for you to apply then when you get your offer letter you and gather all the other documents your proof of funds and all the rest come to this website go back there upload those documents download those you are to download fill them and submit again then you are good to go you pay the visa application fee they are going to tell you where to book for biometrics you book for but remember you have to make payment i think it's a hundred and um and maybe 85 dollars i don't remember i've not checked it again you do the payment for the visa and the biometrics you go to the biometric center and you do it and you come back and you wait as simple as abc if you are finding difficulties you shouldn't be paying people to apply for visas for you pay people to get admissions for you because that is what you need in case you are paying people make sure there are people that you trust and you know you can see them all right don't get money take your money and one you give to somebody you cannot see the person it's so 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 bad because i get a lot of people they come to me they are like milton um i gave money to this person i lost a lot of money people didn't do it i cannot do anything and again remember that i do not chat people anyhow if i give you my contact you are going to reach me only when you have an appointment i don't give contacts anyhow and don't reply to anybody telling you to write them on telegram or whatsapp on oh, yeah don't give my uh sell telephone number on any whatsapp or telegram group on here please be warned and be careful if i reply to your comment you are going to notice that i am the one that replied to your comment because it will appear in a dark form please put this into consideration remember i equally said that those who are broke from africa because i belong to the broke category all right if you are broke do not target universities i already explained to you in other videos behind so please put this into consideration and do the right thing it is very very important important i hope this is going to help you till we meet again in another one